Thank you so much for coming to this informational session on artisan and historian. It is Thursday, October the 13th of 2022. And tonight we're basically just going to go over the two software programs kind of quickly, just spending 30 minutes on historian and 30 minutes on artisan to help either refresh you because you've used this in the past or to introduce you to some things so that you can see if it might be something that you'd be interested in doing in, in the future. These so. are called storybooks or photo books. And with the software program called Artisan, you can create books. So you're creating digital pages, but then you're actually printing the book into a physically bound and so they come in a variety of sizes. You can order multiple copies, which is why digital is so wonderful because you don't have to duplicate the work. You just order more than one. So these are storybooks. You create them with the program called Artisan. This is a custom album, which you can design in Artisan, but you can print at Creative Memories. So Keep in mind that Forever and Creative Memories are two completely different companies, and I am a representative for both companies. So this is called a custom album, and you order it through Creative Memories. You can design the cover. You can design a custom spine. <laughs> you can even put stuff on the back, you know, lots of love from mom. And then it is printed into the same book cloth material that the Creative Memories albums are printed with and so when you get it back you can then fill it so what i've done is these are custom pages that i designed them with artisan a company by forever but then i ordered them through creative memories when they had a special so that's a so, custom album designed with the artisan software and then this book will show you some pages are created in artisan as flat photographs so i've created them just trying to find you one sometimes they're hard to figure out because they look and feel just like a regular page okay there's one so this page was created using the artisan program i printed it as a 12 by 12 photograph and then i put it on my page you could just kind of see how i could lift it there so I just taped the whole 12 by 12 page down onto a white refill and it allowed me to incorporate this page, of course, is traditional. So this is my child's artwork, which why why scan artwork to digitally scrapbook it when because then you're still stuck with it. So you might as well add as much as you can. Um, but then this is kind of hybrid scrapbooking where you're inserting pages. So this is a 12 by 12 page print. Okay, and it comes just like a photograph, just like a four by six, it says Fuji Chrome on the back, whatever, um, except it's a different size. So okay, any questions about what you can print with Artisan? So where did you get the 12 by 12 printed? Through Creative I got those printed through a company called persnicketyprints.com. So wherever you can get a 12 by 12 printed, basically. I used to print at Costco, they were $1.99, now they're like $7.99. So I don't print at Costco anymore. You can print through forever. Um, I like I like persnickyprints.com. But roughly what price are they per page averaging out? At Persnickety Prints, once they're they're $1.99 American normally, Mary, but they go on sale in batches of 50 for a dollar fifty American. The kicker with persnickyprints.com is that you have to pay shipping and I believe the shipping is up to about $15 American to ship them so what I have been doing is I don't order any prints until I have at least 15 to order it's 15 I order 15 I pay $15 so it's a buck a print to ship them and then they cost me a buck 50 so they're 250 American all right so any more questions before we kind of talk about historian because I just I wanted to show you so that you can wrap your head around artisan because now we're going to talk about historian historian is the organizing software program and it's a little easier to understand it's it's basically it's an organizational system that runs on a pc it'll only run on a mac if you have a, a windows platform and it's um it's great for organizing and editing images and open historian six 
it looks like this, except of course the picture of my kids. You will have um, up here on the top left, I'm just gonna go through the buttons and kind of show you what this program can do. So there is a media library option. That's all of your photographs in your library. So what, everything you put in goes into your library. A cabinet is kind of like a drawer in your library where you can open a new cabinet if you want to. You can have several cabinets running. Um, for example, if you had, if you were doing historical pictures from the 1920s and it was all scanned images and you just wanted to keep them completely separate, then you might open a separate cabinet. A new cabinet is just how you open new, new projects. You can recover your cabinet. So if you lose your entire library and you have a backup, then you can recover it. This button will be very helpful when you get started because it's gonna answer a lot of your questions. And then there are options. Um, down here on the bottom left-hand corner, it says software is up to date. You always wanna make sure that your software is up to date. So if you are running anything except Historian 6, you will never be able to get it up to date anymore because they're no longer updating either um, Historian 4. There never was a Historian 5. So we went right from Historian 4 to Historian 6. They're no longer supporting or updating Historian 4 and they're no longer updating or supporting any of the memory manager softwares from Creative so Memories. So Creative Memories first introduced us to digital scrapbooking in about 2006. And they had these two software programs, Memory Manager and Storybook Creator. They were running them with a company called Panstoria. So when Creative Memories went bankrupt, Panstoria took back the two software programs and then forever approached Panstoria and said, we'd like to buy the rights to these two software programs. So now Forever.com has been really good to support us using Memory Manager and Storybook Creator for many years, but they're now at a point where they're no longer doing that because they've been doing it for 10 years. So now everybody needs to buy the Forever software. If you programs. have something working on your computer and you don't need any tech support or any updates, I'm not telling you not to use Memory Manager anymore. I'm just telling you that if you are looking to get started or if you need to, an upgrade, you're going to have to buy these new programs. So let's open up the media library and see what we have inside. Library, you're going to see something that looks like this. All of your pictures are going to be the oldest date stamp is going to show up at the beginning unless you change the default. So these are obviously pictures that I've scanned into my memory vault from, from years ago. So let's just go across the top super quickly. And I'm not going to click on them all. I'm just going to kind of tell you what so what they do. The all button means you want to look at all of your pictures and all of the dates. So you will see there is a timeline down here. If I only wanted to look at pictures, it says 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. If I only wanted to look at pictures from 2014, I can click the 2014 bar and it'll show me pictures from 2014. Then there's a little chevron here. So under the word timeline, this little, little chevron will open up this slider. And if you move the ball, left click this little ball and slide it to the right, you'll see in behind us, things are expanding. And now I can see months and days. So I'm gonna close my little chevron, close that door. And now I'm looking at uh, pictures by month. So if, for example, I wanna see all the pictures from July of 2021, I'm gonna click on my July. And these are all my pictures from July. So that, timeline is going to be a real time saver for you because you do not need to sort your images by date. Don't when I get talking about folders over here, don't create a folder for Christmas 21, Christmas 22, Christmas 23. Just create a Christmas folder and if you only want to see pictures from Christmas of 21, then you'll go into your December file and actually if I click that chevron and open this door up again and I further expand this all the way to the end now it's giving me all of my um images let me go back here to December if I click on December 25th of 21 I don't have a lot of pictures from Christmas but there they are these are my pictures from last Christmas that are already in my vault so don't sort by date Always use your timeline when you're trying to find something specific by date. So when you click the all button, you're asking your computer to look at all of your pictures on every date. So oftentimes you will find when you get playing with this that you can't find some pictures. You'll be scrolling and you'll be like, I'm sure I had pictures. Well, what you've probably done is you've either, either clicked 
a specific folder that does not contain the pictures you're looking for, or you've clicked a timeline that does not contain the pictures you're looking for. So before you start freaking out thinking you've lost a whole bunch of your photos, go back and click that all button. It is your default to show you everything in your vault. And once you get going, you'll see down here, it says I have 100,349 images in my vault. And that is not a lie. I love this program. I have lots of photos in it. I have 100,000 images. Home just takes you back to the, to the basic home page. Faces is facial recognition. And so when you import pictures into your software program, you can ask the computer to recognize images for you. This is something we're not going to do tonight. I just want you to know it exists. It's a wonderful feature because you can create folders for certain people, for everybody in your life, if you want. And then you can click on their folder and say, show me if I go into people. If I click on Laura's folder, these are pictures of Laura. There's probably the first picture I have of Laura from March of 2007. And then I can go all the way down here. There's a picture of Laura at the conference this summer. So now it's saying I have 260 items down here on the left-hand side, 260 items showing. So what happened to 100,000 images? Well, they didn't have Laura in them. You can start, uh, you can rate your images if you want to, and then find them by the most favorite images. You click media types. I can show all of your media, your images, your audios, your videos, your PDFs. So you can sort all kinds of things in this. If you had um, a music book that you wanted to scan all your music into PDFs, you could import, you could create a separate cabinet just for music. And you could import all these PDFs of your music. And then you could sort them, the key of G, the key of F, the key of C, Christmas music, Celtic music. So that's another, like, that's an idea. Be thinking about that kind of thing with this program. It's not just for photographs. You can sort all kinds of things with this program. Search will allow you to search by um, information that's tagged with the metadata. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. This is probably one of the best buttons going on is search because it just makes it so easy to find things. Dates, you can search by specific dates. And then I have a question, Maria. Yeah, Maureen. You said the, the little calendar, you can search by dates. Why would you use that instead of your timeline? So let's see, because I don't know the answer right off the top of my head. I'm going to click on date. So basically, Maureen, it does the exact same thing as your timeline. So if maybe you wanted to just really quickly jump instead of scrolling through because you, you use the chevron to open up these little bars and stuff. Okay. So it, it's the exact same thing. And there are, we call them hot buttons. There are hot buttons in here where you can get to the same thing two different ways. Okay. Thank you. And auto fix is an editing part that you will play with a whole lot. This these buttons here beside auto fix help you to rotate your image. So if you've imported images and they're sideways, you can just rotate them. Forever will allow you to grab pictures from the forever vault. So if you also have a forever cloud storage system and you wanna bring pictures into Historian or shoot them up to the vault, you can do that through forever because forever has cloud storage. Another lesson for another night. Camera, if you've got your camera plugged in and you wanna import pictures from your camera, this is how you get your pictures into your vault. You can also plug in your phone and then go to the camera on your phone to grab your image. Does this work with um, iPhones or is it just um, Android phones? It works with iPhones, but there's a bit of a workaround if you're shooting your photos in Hayek form, H-E-I-C. Does that ring a bell with you? No. Okay, so there, Apple is using a new form instead of JPEGs. It is using Hayek. Oh. And it's supposed to be better quality. Um, okay. But this program doesn't really like them. So uh, when we, not tonight, but when we get into how do you import your pictures and how do you get them into the vault, that's definitely something I will show you how to do. You can search your computer if you've got images already on your computer and you want to get them into your vault, you can search your computer for them. So. If you want to browse Facebook and import pictures from Facebook, there you go. And then there is another uh, recognized faces in here. So if you're doing, you're actually recognizing the images, then you can run a facial recognition here. So this one is um, to help you find people you've already recognized. And this one over here is to help you to recognize. Scanner, them. If you have a, a scanner, you can plug your scanner in. 
And then when you click on scanner, it'll just whatever you scan through your flatbed will automatically come in here as an image. And Bev, that's how I brought in all my music was I scan yeah. them. Files is just also, oh, so files will open up your computer as well and help you find things. All right. And the more you Thank play you. with this and click these buttons and bring things in, the better you're going to get. All right. So it is a quick question about bringing files in. Nice. Mm -hmm. Same picture will it bring all three copies in? If you have not edited any of the metadata, if you haven't changed the name of it, the program is supposed to recognize it as the same image and not give you a duplication. Yes. The nice okay. thing about it is when you do tag an image, it doesn't save the image three different times. So for example, if you take a picture of bingo on the dock in the summer, you can tag that picture, your dog bingo, the dock and summer. And then if you're looking for pictures of bingo, you can click on bingo's folder and see all your pictures of bingo, including the one on the dock. If you're looking for pictures from the summer, there he is, but you haven't saved it three times. You've just tagged one image. So on the left-hand side, we have all the, the tagging. And this is really um the gut of the entire program so when you first open up your program it's not going to have a whole lot of folders you get to create the folders you the way you want them you can move them you can delete them you can rename them you can correct spelling errors after you've named them so nothing is permanent in this program which is so nice so you will see for example i've created under my categories they will give you a my categories folder and they will give you a not tagged. So not tagged will just look at your 100,000 images and tell you which ones you've never tagged. Tagging images is the whole reason we use Historian so that we can find stuff. If you just dump all your pictures in here and just, just be happy that they're sorted by date because they will automatically sort by date, um, that's fine. But really, you're not maximizing the program. So you should take the time to, to tag your images. So I've created categories like family, people, friends, events, sports, seasons, nature, scenery. And this, again, is another thing for another night where we'll get together and we'll just tag all night long. Um, but for example, this little blue thing is a folder. And when you open up your folder, you will see I've got more folders and then I have tag tags. So before facial recognition started, because I've had this program forever, I only ever had tags. Now I have facial recognition for people. Um, so you cannot put an image into a folder. You can only put it into a tag or a face. So you create all these big, broad category folders like families, animals, holidays, and then you further divide them into smaller categories using tags. These are the item properties. When you click on a photograph, you will get all of the metadata that comes up. So for example, you'll get the name. So this photograph was named Pat underscore Lever. And that's because it came from Pat Lever. And that was the name of it. Most of our images are like IMG underscore 2483, IMG underscore 2494, you know. I don't recommend you spend time renaming images. So in Bev's case where she's gonna scan she's going to scan files and she has to name her files, then that's different. But when you dump in 200 pictures from your cell phone and they're all IMG underscore one, IMG underscore two, don't go in there and change them. That's just way too much work and it's not going to help you find them any faster. So the name is just whatever the name the computer gave them when they gave them to you, when you imported them. The date in a perfect world should be the date that the photo was taken. Now, of course, if you scan an image from 1912, it's gonna have October 13th, 2023. So you can change the date of my dad. It's called TMP 435505, blah, blah, blah. And I've just put 1948. I don't know when it was taken. I just know that was the year it was taken. So you can change your dates. It's called a fuzzy date. When you don't now have the exact date, you just put, you, so you could put, fall of 94. Tell your story is a really nice feature where you can write all the little information that would maybe be on the back of the photograph is what you can put in tell your story. So if they're pictures from a trip and you want to remember that this was the restaurant that you ate at when you had sushi for the first time, then you can write a little story in here. And that makes it really easy when you go back to scrapbook, you can open it up when you are when you put your pictures on your page and you're like, when was this, where was this? You can open up memory manager or historian and say, oh yeah, that was the day that that happened. 
Me, you're not going to tell your story for every image, but it is a really nice feature for, for doing lots of little Maria, reminders. I ask, you mentioned about uh, in your vault. Now, do you have a storage vault or is it an online vault? This is like, on is your computer. This is saved on your computer. This is not in the cloud, Mary. This this program runs on your hard drive desktop backup. as well. It's a good idea to have a backup. And is that the cloud? Um, not mine, but because I have, I have history, I have uh, the forever cloud as well. So my pictures from my phone okay. go up to forever. And then I pull the ones I want into historian. So I'm saving okay. them in the cloud. Okay. I'm saving them in historian. And then I'm also saving them on an external hard drive here in my house. Okay. I have the external. You're right. Okay. Thank you. Does that mean like this, um, historian saves to the external drive or no? Yeah. So when you first set up your program, it'll ask you to create a shadow copy and it's a good idea to do the shadow copy when you first start. So, and then you'll set it up. So every time you close this program on your computer, it'll update the shadow copy. Of course, the caveat is you have to have your external hard drive plugged in in order for it to save to the shadow copy. But then it just makes all of the changes. It doesn't save the whole program every time you close it. It just saves all the changes. So if you went in one day and you tagged 200 photographs and then you backed up your shadow copy, it would make all those changes and all of your tagging would be there. Here on the right hand side, it'll ask you the facial recognition. We'll say, who is this? If you have not already recognized who it is. And again, this is something we're gonna do down the road. And then here it'll tell you, where is this picture already been tagged to? So under it says tags and mine says pay. So this is a picture of my father that I've put into my father's folder. And if I had put it into multiple folders, all of the folders that it was already in would show up. So that is kind of in a really broad way what this historian program can do. It also, and I haven't talked anything about any of the editing that it can do. I'll just show you. Okay, so this little picture here. I just double click that image to bring up the editing feature in Historian. When you are in the editing part, you'll see that our options up here have changed. So now um, there's a crop button here. So I could, I could crop my image if I wanted to, rotate it. You can change play with the light. You can, there's all kinds of things to do. We're not going to do any of them tonight, but just know that there are editing I'm gonna features crop in this here. picture down here on the bottom left. I'm going to click crop. Then down here on the bottom right, I'm going to click save. All right. So now you'll see that my new image is here that I just cropped. But when you hover over an image, you'll see there's a little down arrow. If you click the down arrow beside your image, you have an option, lots of options. One of them is to show the original image. So if I click show original, it's going to go back to the original. So it keeps both copies unless you choose to delete the original. It'll keep both copies for you. And I don't endorse you editing every picture. I edit the pictures that I'm going to print so that they're ready to be printed. When you've decided which pictures you, you, you edit the ones that you want and you're going to print them, you're going to make a storybook out of them. What do you do with the stuff that you don't want? Like, do you delete that? Like, you've got a hundred thousand photos. Do, do are you just going to keep growing this? Clearly, you... I'm not deleting enough, am I? <laughs> so, what I have started to do on the left hand side here with my tags, I have created a folder that's called album projects. So, if I open up my album projects, there is one in here called Clark's Scrapbooks. If I open up Clark's Scrapbooks, there is one, there are all kinds of tags. So here's, let's go all the way down to the bottom. Um, Clark's Disney 2018 seven by seven album. So what I did, Maureen, when I um, chose my images is I went through all of my pictures. Okay, so I just clicked on that and it's telling me that there are none. The reason it's telling me there are none is because down here on my timeline, I was just looking at pictures from 2022, but she went to Disney in 2018. So you see how there's just a faint little gray bar there. Those are just the pictures from 2018 that are in Clark's Disney album. So I'm just going to click on that. And now you can see her Disney album. So I did, Maureen, I, I took the pictures from my um, vault that I wanted to scrapbook and I put them all into an album for Clark's Disney. Then I printed the ones I wanted. And I created 
a traditional scrapbook for her. So what you're saying or suggesting is once you've created them, why keep them, right? So you don't, you don't have to, you can delete them. You have, you have a scrapbook. You've got the best uh, way to store them, right? They're in a scrapbook. The only reason I don't delete them is because space is cheap and time is money. And I just think if anything ever happened to the scrapbook, I, at least I know what pictures were in it. You could always, like, as long as you save your album project, you can always reorder another copy, gotcha. right? Yep. That's a really yeah, good but... idea. If you're going to import pictures from your phone, go through your phone and get rid of the screenshots that you've taken, the pictures of the sale item at Walmart. Like, get rid of all that crap before you right. bring it in, because then you're just going to have to delete it when you get it in there, because you don't need right. that kind of stuff. Or if you've got two pictures, it's the same picture, just delete one. So, right. yeah. Okay. I, I try to delete at the source. And right now, for most of us, our phone is and the source. I did not talk about the work area. Uh, over here on the right-hand side, the item properties. So that tells you the name of your image, the date it was taken, what cat, what groups you've already put it into, and what tags you've given it. Um, and then below that is a work area. So if you click on the work area, this is like a little side table where you can drag images. So if, for example, I wanted to drag this one of Clark from NASA and this one from, I can put those on that little table. And once they're there, then you can share them. And by sharing them, I mean, you can send them to your forever vault. You can put them on a file on your computer. You can email them to somebody. You can create a slideshow if you just want to show the highlights from your trip but people don't want to see all 800 pictures, you can just show them. Well, here's just like the top 60, create a slideshow. You can um, send them to Artisan 6, which we're going to talk about the next software program. And then they're still allowing you to send them to Artisan 5. So your, your little side table here is just how you move your pictures around and get you, them to other the places. validity of this, why this program is so awesome. Um, I'm going to show you a picture of my son, uh, okay, so I'm going to go into my family, our family. I'm going to click on um, Hugh. Hugh's my son. Then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go to uh, Nature and Scenery. And I'm going to click on, uh, I got to find something that Huey would be in with Nature and Scenery. Let's try water. So if I hover over the word water and I click the down arrow, I have an option of asking the computer to show me just the pictures that are in water. I can say, show me the pictures that are in water in addition to all of the pictures of Hugh, which we're looking at. Or I can say, show me the pictures that are both in water and in Hugh. So it's kind of like the Venn diagram. So that's the one I'm going to pick. So now it is showing me, and then I'm going to down here and click all. Hopefully there will be one. Oh my gosh. So, okay, they're not, there's not many. And I don't know why I take these water, but this picture is a picture of you with water. So you don't need a whole lot of information to find pictures, but you have to tag them in order to find them. All right. So I'm going to minimize historian. And I'm going to bring up Artisan. So not as pretty on the home page, but Artisan is the program that you use to create projects. You can create calendars. You can create cards. You can create page prints. You can create storybooks. You can create coffee mugs. You can create mouse pads, coasters, all kinds of things. And forever.com prints a lot of what you can create. Um, and then Creative Memories also allows you to do some as well. When I talk about digital scrapbooking, this is digital scrapbooking. So if you just want to get your pictures organized so that you can print them in traditionally scrapbook, you can leave the call because this is not going to interest you. And people think of digital scrapbooking as just everything's virtual and you never have anything tangible. And it's so hard to explain that digital scrapbooking, you create something digitally, but then you always print it. You always have something in the end. You have a book to hold. You have a picture on the wall. 
you have a, a coaster, a calendar, blah, blah, blah. So digital scrapbooking is just a way to, to, to create a scrap. Across the top, you have the options to manage your content, buy content, import content, and then there's a training and inspiration. So what the heck is content? Well, content is um, the paper and the stickers and the embellishments that we scrapbook with traditionally in a digital format. Then over here, you have create a new project and open an existing project or page. So uh, once you get your projects loaded, so you see I have one project here on the bottom of my page. Once you, once you create your first project, then they will show up down here on the bottom. So a project might be a calendar. A project might be a storybook. A project might be a 12 by 12 page. It could be an eight and a half by 11 flyer for your garage sale next weekend. It could be a thank you card that you're going to print as a four by six. It could be your Christmas card that you're going to print as a four by six. Um, a project is just anything that you're that you're about to create. So I'm going to click on this 12 by 12 hue so that I can just show you a couple of things about what this program does. So what you're looking at is a 12 by 12 white blank piece of paper. So think of this as just a white refill in your album. And what are you going to do with it? With this program, you can, and I'm just going to read these off. So think about traditional scrapbooking. You can cut something. You can copy it. You can paste it down. You can remove it. You can undo and redo. Of course, those are very important buttons. You can align things. So if you want everything on the left side all lined up perfectly, or if you want things, you can order things, um, group things, flatten things. We'll talk about flattening um, more. We're going to talk about all of these down the road. Um, you can rotate. Then in your project, you can add pages. You can recover pages. So if you deleted a page and then you decide you want it back, you can bring it back. You can clean up your photos. You can fix stuff. You can pull in templates. A nice thing about digital scrapbooking is that you can use templates and just autofill them. Um, and then you can change backgrounds. So let's look at what does all of that mean. On the right-hand side, you have pages, photos, and content. So if you click on pages, these are the pages in your book. So I'm just going to click this number 41. This is a page that I created of Huey getting a haircut. Looks like it could be a traditional page, right? So we have paper in the background. We've got little square pieces of paper. I've used the terrific triangles border maker cartridge, add a little embellishment, cut that like a flag. I've matted two photographs. I've got some journaling. So it looks just like traditional scrapbooking, but it's all been created digitally. And then this is something that I would just save as a 12 by 12, print it as a page print, and put it into Hugh's album. All right, does that make sense? So the, these are all the pages that I've created. I can pull this over and just add some more space. Um, so these are all the pages in this one project. Then if you click on the photo tab, these are the photos that I've brought in. You can bring in photos to into your program from, his, from Artisan, from Historian, or from a file on your computer or from your phone. You can bring pictures in from anywhere that you have that you have them that they can access from your computer. Um, and then the nice thing about the photos is it says show all photos. So all the photos I brought in for Hughes project are here. But if you click the little down button and you say show the photos not used, then it'll show you just the pictures that I haven't used in his book already. That's a really nice feature because you'd be like, gosh, did I already scrapbook that? Um, and then that'll tell you. Yeah. And there's also content. So this is what Maureen was talking about. Content is these papers. So I don't remember the name of this collection from Creative Memories that's back in here. Um, but maybe one of you guys do. So when you click on content, you know, there's a little chevron here. I'm going to click on that. That's going to open up um, all of my library of kits. So in order to scrapbook digitally, you have to have digital paper stickers and embellishments. Forever.com sells digital kits, and so does Creative Memories. So I've been buying all of the Creative Memories digital kits, and I organize them. And again, this is something we'll have to talk about another night. But I have a folder for the CM Digital Content 2022. And if I open that up and scroll through these, 
hopefully you will recognize you crack me up wide open places what a zoo welcome home wanderlust vivid memories vineyard escapes united kingdom do these all sound familiar to the creative memories people on the page i hope so so let's let's just click on sun rays for days for example or maybe what's new uh the newest one is that the fall one What's the new fall one? Oh, Golden Harvest. Okay, so Golden Harvest just came out last month. So if you already own Golden Harvest as a traditional collection, you should recognize these because these are all the page prints from Golden Harvest. The beautiful thing about traditional scrap or digital scrapbooking is you're not going to run out of paper. So if I use this print on this page, I can use this print on the next page and I can use it on a third page because it's digital, you don't ever run out of content. Then you also have, um, we're just looking at the papers right now, but if I click, this is the paper button. If I click on the embellishment button, these are the embellishments from Golden Harvest. Hopefully you recognize them if you purchase Golden Harvest. And so I like to buy the digital content as well as the traditional content, because it allows me to do hybrid scrapbookings. Just think of content as your paper stickers and embellishments. And you can reuse the same content all the time. You don't ever have to buy new content if you don't want to. But if, you, if you're going to be scrapbooking Christmas pictures from last year, you might want a new Christmas kit. If you're going to be doing Easter or summer or cottage or, you know, like there's content for, for every theme. In other words, digital is actually more economical in, than uh, paper because you can buy it once and use it over and over again. It's not like when you use up one of your borders embellishments, you can use it a number of times. It's not used up. Okay. You also don't have to print your photos. Mm -hmm. You just have to print your photo books and you also don't have to buy all the tools and cropping devices and stuff. Yeah, so tools is the big difference, Maureen. Thank you for mentioning. A 12 by 12 digital storybook can cost Without a sale price. But for those of you that scrapbook traditionally with creative memories, you know that once you buy your album and two or three sets of refills with the page protectors and all of the paper and you print your photos and you use adhesive and you put it all together, it's $300. So you'll see now I've got my 12 by 12 temp project open and then I can just go back to my Hue project by clicking on the tab up here. And so you can have up to five projects open at one time. So if you're working on three nephews and you want to do a page and then you want to import that page into a second book you can import a page from one book into another book so you don't have to duplicate it which is great when you're doing things like calendars if you create 12 calendars for your sister and then you want to duplicate that project and then just change a few things put in your brother's wife's pictures and uh, you know make a few changes then you don't have to redo the entire project you just duplicate it rename it and then make subtle changes so it's more appropriate for the person it's for that's another benefit of digital scrapbooking is the ability to duplicate projects and of course if you print a book a family heritage book and all your cousins want copies then you just you know print more than one copy so this is artisan it's sold by forever Historian is sold by Forever. If you do not have an account at forever.com, let me know before you create one because I can send you a $20 code which you can apply if you're going to purchase these software programs. These programs are not cheap. So right now, I'm just going to click on the Historian link and tell you that Historian is typically $139.99 U.S., Everything at Forever is in American dollars. Everything at Creative Memories is in Canadian dollars. And so something we'll do later is I'll show you how to buy and import content. Um, so Historian right now is $98 US, right? Regular $139.99. And there is a free trial period for 30 days, but don't use it up unless you are sure you're going to buy it because when the 30 days are up, you'll lose everything you've done that you've played with. It's great if you're if you're sitting on the fence and you know you've got till the 17th and you're either going to buy it or you're not, then you might as well try the free version. And it, there's a free version right on this uh, forever.com slash historian. If I go into the artisan, artisan is really expensive. It is normally $229.99 US. $230 American is the regular price for the Artisan 6. 
So if you don't have Artisan 5 to upgrade from, $230. But right now, it's on sale at 30% off. It's $161 American. Still expensive. But honestly, I can't I couldn't I couldn't be a scrapbooker and I couldn't be in an artisan or a theme advisor without these software programs. I use them every day. My kids will text me and say, Can you send me that picture from grade five when you know the day I fell off the monkey bars and broke my arm? Yep, it's in your mailbox. Like it's so easy. easy to find stuff. I just want to interject with a pitch for in favor of this. Like I used to be a diehard scrapbooker, traditional scrapbooker. And I did my first digital storybook and I was like, I I haven't looked back. And one of the big benefits is like when I had all my traditional tools and papers and books and and page protectors and stuff, I I needed so much room. (laughs) I spread out and I'd be scrapbooking and then I'd be shuffling around where's my corner rounder it's it's around here somewhere and I'd be you know and then there's the fact that you have to cart out all this stuff set it all up and then when you're finished pack it all up and put it away this is so much easier you just open up your t- your laptop and away you go you're, you're going all you have to do is launch the program it's a 15 second process as opposed to 15 minutes of dragging out all your stuff and then putting it all away again if you don't have a sp- special um craft room where you can leave all your stuff spread out like it, it's just it's just I mean it's just so much easier I I I decide is this going to be a traditional scrapbook or is this going to be a digital scrapbook and and most of my stuff are traditional I, I'm a traditional scrapbooker but Maureen's right there is something really easy about just taking my laptop to the cottage if I want to scrapbook you know a calendar or um if you're just going away for a day crop and you just want to work. Yeah, it's something. portable. You can take it to the coffee shop and, and yeah, you know, very portable, it. very easy. It's, but it's not that tactile, you know, you can't lick it like you can with our other products when the new stuff comes. So um, I just, I think there are ways to incorporate these into traditional scrapbooking, or if you want to give up traditional scrapbooking and go hundred percent digital, then you won't have a lot of, trouble finding people who would who would support you in that Does this have to be updated every year th- these no. programs no actually uh mary good question so artisan five has been out i want to say for four years and um historian four there never was a five historian four has been out for 10 so they will give you free updates but you rarely have to pay for an upgrade. So that's why it's important to run those updates at the beginning when you first open them up, make sure you're running the most current ones. So yeah, you're right. Like that's a lot of money. You wouldn't want to be spending that every year on the software program, but you're not going to have to. These programs are, are yeah. and these are both new, like Historian 6 and Artisan 6, Artisan 6 has been out for a year and it's not going anywhere anytime yeah. soon. They put a lot of time and money into it. They made some great advances over the last version. And there were a lot of bugs uh, eight months ago. And they've got them all worked out pretty much that I can tell. Um, so yeah, yeah, this program's going to be good. I'd say five to eight years on another one anytime soon. Hi, well, Maria. I know I used to have, what uh, I like about... I used to have a job. And it... Uh, it only went for so many years and then it up, you had to upgrade it onto a different, if you wanted the next one, it was a different computer. And it was very expensive because I had the video and the, and the Photoshop part as well. Yeah. So, so Photoshop uh, is I, really I was at that. Photoshop's very, very expensive, expensive and it's very hard to use. So this, there's a lot you can do with these programs, which can make them very complicated, but also, you can just do the. I was just going to say, I got to get my head wrapped around how I would use Artisan and because I want to continue to use all my wonderful tools and scrapbooking supplies and my room full of like stuff. Um, but I see some benefit in actually owning Artisan for the purposes of doing almost like a power layout with the digital content that I have on my computer so I can determine. You know, I'm not going to overdo a scrapbook. So, like, Laura Lynn, I think what I would suggest is that we we do a session on the album planner in Historian. 
So Historian has an album planner where you can choose all of your images and then say, okay, well, I'm going to put these three pages, pictures on the first page, and this is the second page, and this is the third page. And it's called an album planner, and it's in Historian. So Bev's got her thumb up. She thinks that's a good idea. So I have uh, I have used the, the Historian album planner, and that is absolutely something. I'm going to write that down that we need to talk about that.